Hello listeners, welcome to Views on Health. A great pleasure to have with me back on the program, Dr. Indunil Piedigama, consultant, obstetrician and gynecologist, base hospital, Kahavatta. A warm welcome back to SLBC, doctor. Thank you. And um, Dr. Indunil Piedigama is going to focus on menstrual bleeding, a common feature with all women. Without any further ado, over to you, doctor. So, uh, why we thought of discussing about this topic is any woman in her reproductive life will have menstrual bleeding. So, if you take uh, any girl starting from around maybe around 10 to 12 years, uh, start will start to have monthly bleeds and this will continue till about 50 years in their life. So, almost uh, half of their uh, life. So generally if we take, um, because of the current uh, schedules and how, how the current uh, society works, any woman will experience about 400 menstrual cycles in their life, uh, lifetime. Um, so therefore I thought it may be a very good topic to talk about since uh, it's almost more than 50% of women in the country and plus um, they're experiencing this problem or this phenomenon almost half of their uh, lifetime. So uh, to begin with, um, so it's a, it's a very normal thing to have uh, menstrual bleeding. So uh, what I wanted to elaborate is a lot of people come for um, consultations because they think they're having abnormal sort of bleeding patterns. So first of all, I thought like we'll t discuss about what is a normal bleed and what is a abnormal bleed and then take it from there onwards. Thank you, Doctor, for that uh, brief introduction to menstrual bleeding. And um, when you say that there are 400 menstrual cycles during one's lifetime and you estimate from about 10 to 12 years till about 50 years, that is to the time that menopause sets in. Um, of course, you uh, we are getting into something which you haven't still come into. There could be more than 400 depending on uh, the issues that uh, a woman, yes, a absolutely. girl going into womanhood will face in this period of time. Yes. Okay, I just wanted to clarify that. Over to you, doctor, to continue. Okay. So where we stopped was uh, what is normal and what is abnormal. So basically, we'll, um, we'll say a little bit about what is normal bleeding so that the people will be able to understand what is abnormal and when they should seek uh, help. So generally, uh, we expect, why we call it menstruation is because it comes monthly. So that does not mean it has to come every 30 days. Some women will have it earlier and some women will have uh, less frequently. But generally speaking, if the bleeding is within about 24 to 38 days, we take it as normal frequency. That is that they are having normal uh, cycle frequency. And uh, one thing is this cycle frequency. Then the next thing is whether it's a regular menstrual pattern or a irregular menstrual pattern. What I meant by regular and irregular is if somebody is getting their periods every, we'll say 26 days, they're getting each and every month, every 26 day cycles, that means they're having regular periods. So um, some people will not have any bleeding at all. We call them um, absent menstruation or amenorrhea is what we call it. And some will have regular sort of pattern. That is not that exactly they will get the period on the same day, but they will have at least within a 20 days uh, from their um, expected menstrual date. But if it goes beyond this, then it becomes an irregular cycle, which is something uh, to be concerned of. Then the next thing is, when the bleed starts, how long does this continue and how much should it bleed? So the duration is generally is taken normal as from about four days up to about eight days. This is in the majority of people. 
but this can vary little by little in different people. But for us, that's what we think. About four to eight days is a is a normal uh, length of a cycle, um, normal duration of the cycle. Then about the volume also, it's very hard to uh, measure. But there are a few studies that they have actually measured the uh, volume of uh, menstrual bleeding. So generally, it varies from about five mL, five milliliters up to about 80 milliliters. So if it is more than 80 milliliters, this is considered a heavy bleed. And if it is less than 5 milliliters, it is considered a light meal, light uh, bleed. So those are the normal cutoffs that we take for uh, menstrual bleeding. But um, now, when we talk about these normal cutoffs, these are not absolutely uh, the ones spot on. In the sense, we take the population at, in a whole, we expect these kind of things to happen in about a 50% of the people, that is the middle of the people. But there will be some who are not actually having any problem, but they would not belong to uh, these categories that I mentioned. Uh, also, the other issue is now this volume, uh, people don't actually measure how much that they bleed during a menstruation. So what happens is it is most of the time is a perception of the person or the perception of the woman. They might feel that they're having heavy bleeding so we have to go by that. If they don't uh, think that they're having enough bleeding that is also something their perception and that may be more important than rather than going for the absolute values in these uh, situations. Thank you, Doctor, uh, for that detailed uh, explanation. Now, when you take um, the the majority, you said there is a there is a sort of a set pattern, and of course, as in any case, there are the variants. One can have more, one can have less, but you spoke of the average. Now, when you talk of uh, the uh, girl from about ten to twelve years, which has reached puberty. Uh, would you say that uh, straight away they'll have the same sort of uh, pattern of uh, menstrual bleeding every month or will there be like uh, uh, gaps of they start, you know, they have a menstrual cycle, then it stops or they don't have it and then it starts. So at, in, in such cases, because they're young and uh, the parents also, maybe if they, there's the first daughter that they're having, they can have concerns. So would you at that point say it's best that they seek some sort of medical advice uh, as this, to why it is like that? This is a very, a very good question and I think it's a very timely one because most of the time we, we see this problem, uh, parents bringing their children that they're not having menstruation regularly since their uh, menarche or their puberty. So that is not the case. Most of the people at the beginning would not have this regular pattern of menstruation and after some time only this pattern will develop. And also, on the other hand, by the end of the reproductive cycle, that is when you are uh, getting near around 50 years, 45 to 50, again you will get experience the same similar pattern where you don't get the period spot on and there will be gaps. So these are normal uh, physiological uh, uh, ways and there's nothing much that you have to be uh, doing about it or you don't need to be worried about them. So why this um, irregularities happen is based on the hormonal levels within the body. So we call this the um, hormonal axis where there is part in the brain then the part in the uh, abdomen in the ovaries which works together uh, to uh, nicely uh, uh, make uh, sort of uh, certain hormone levels go up and down, which causes a regular pattern of menstruation. So what happens is, generally, the, the hormones that are secreted from the brain will uh, activate a center called pituitary uh, in the brain, and from that, it will affect the ovaries. So what happens is, the ovaries will produce an egg every month. So once the egg is produced, um, 
there is a nice pattern of hormonal change that happens till the egg is produced a woman will increase their estrogen levels in the body and once the egg is released from the ovary then the pr the second hormone which is called the progesterone will come into play um, so depending on this estrogen and progesterone and this shift of hormones the inside the womb also there are changes that occur so within the womb there is a layer inside it which grows uh, day by day with, with the effect of estrogen and once this effect is turned to progesterone this layer gets uh, cannot withstand uh, the way it is and it bleeds out um, as the normal menses or the or the uh, menstruation so why this thing happen is generally a woman's body uh, they try to make uh, gets prepared for for a baby every month so there's a egg released and for this egg to get implanted the the womb or the we call it the internal lining of the womb adjusts accordingly so that the uh, egg with a sperm can lodge there and make a healthy baby so this is what happens every month so as you rightly said um, a young girl would not have that capacity to to produce a child because they they are not making eggs as frequently as a, a mature uh, woman so therefore they wouldn't have the cycles as regularly as a mature person and then again when it comes to the end of the reproductive life by about 45 50 years you don't have that capacity to make a child so eggs are not produced as frequently and then the menstruation will not happen as we have explained before doctor going on the same lines um, I've heard of this I mean there are like cases where say a girl is about she's into her teen she's 15 16 and then that she you know uh, gains pu I mean puberty not till then so it's, it's a long wait Naturally, there's a lot of anxiety within her, the family, and uh, could you explain that? Why does it okay. delay to that extent? Okay. So, uh, this is actually a very different topic that we are trying to uh, focus on to, and it's a very wide topic that we are talking about. Um, so, we generally expect a girl to have her first bleed, uh, within about eight years to roughly about 13 years of age some girls will have this earlier and some girls girls will have this later so these are all can be abnormal patterns or or it may be just a variation from the normal but what happens is we we have to look it look at it as a whole like the menstruation is only just one part of the whole uh, phenomenon so there are other changes happening in a girl's uh, body uh, that we say she's going into puberty or not so therefore uh, that's what I said it's a very vast topic to discuss about um, so when there are concerns therefore it's best to seek advice uh, to see uh, whether she's within the normal range or whether the daughter is uh, not matching to this normal range where she might need some help um, to get things uh, going properly. So now you spoke of the regular cycle. What is irregular? What is irregular is not that it doesn't come on the spot on at the same day, but there is about more than a 20 day difference of the uh, cycle. So maybe somebody will get a period uh, on 1st of January and February there's nothing so it comes on March then again it'll come on not in April May it'll come in June so that is one pattern of irregularity on the other hand some may have say January and then again 15th of January then again 25th of January so likewise that pattern can also happen so both of these are irregular and abnormal ways of uh, bleeding. They're treatable? Um, yes. Most of these conditions are treatable 
and um, and so therefore, like what you need to do is to seek the proper advice, and then depending on your situation, it can be treated uh, accordingly. I mean, there is heavy bleeding. Um, it's it's sort of said that it can make the person feel weak. The now. What would you advise in such situations? So, uh, if you really take overall in the in the whole world, uh, this heavy bleeding is a major problem. So, in the developed world, even like a lot of people lose their working days because of the heavy bleeds. Maybe about four to five days a, a month, sometime uh, they lose because of the heaviness of the bleed. But when it comes to our part of the world, uh, we have problems sometimes with the starting nutrition levels of a woman. So we call it anemia, where uh, they have less iron stores in the body, therefore they have less blood cells or red blood cells in their body. So when you have a major bleed or when the bleeding is heavy, what happens is the uh, iron levels will deplete further and they will have what we call anemia. That is what you said they will start experiencing um, shortness of breath, they cannot work, they feel like eating things uh, which are raw like rice or even um, some people eat uh, eat uh, stones and stuff. Um, so that sort of uh, symptoms might appear. This reduces their capacity to work and, uh, and also their IQ levels, uh, ability to contribute to the society. So this is a uh, very uh, big problem when it comes to our part of the world. Doctor, when you take menstrual bleeding, there are some girls who experience a lot of pain in the abdomen and some are basically okay. Yes, that is also another, uh, another completely uh, uh, vast area for us to touch on because uh, most of the people will experience some sort of pain during their menstruation. Uh, that is because of the uh, different chemical compounds that are produced within the, uh, within the cavity of the womb uh, while uh, the, the bleeding occurs. So there is some sort of a pain because of these substances, the womb starts contracting and try to push uh, whatever the content within it uh, uh, through the uh, vaginal canal to the outside. So that's where they experience some sort of pain. But some women will have this pain before the menstruation, starting few days before the menstruation, and it will continue over time and past the menstruation. And also some of them will have very severe pain where they cannot actually do any sort of work by their own. So if these two problems persist, that means there can be some sort of a problem that is or a pathological mechanism that is going within where you need to seek treatment and um, get get proper advice and uh, maybe some medications or even maybe some sort of surgery to get this uh, problem corrected. Uh, Dr. Van, more thing about uh, the gaps. Uh, now, can there be instances where it's been a very regular period for a number of years and then... Uh, the, sadly, there isn't. Yes. A menstrual bleeding, you know, for yes. some time, few months. So, in in medical field, what we see is if any woman who is coming, who is who's in the reproductive age, comes for a problem with bleeding or any pain in the lower tummy, we have to prove that they are not pregnant. So the the most important thing at this situation is to exclude a pregnancy. If somebody is having regular periods, that means they have very high chance that they produce eggs at the proper time. And then uh, there's a high chance if they're sexually active that they, they might uh, uh, produce an uh, embryo within themselves. So if this phenomenon happens, then this shift of hormones does not occur. So then suddenly you might not get a period. So that's where, that's where you need to check for a urine pregnancy test and first exclude a pregnancy. And if it is not so, then take it from there.
So what what happens there after if it's not a pregnancy? If it is not a pregnancy, then what happens is then we would look into what sort of conditions has led to this uh, problem. So we have a look at the woman in a whole, um, their their uh, body habitus, the weight, and how they look. Maybe they will be having some uh, features of changes in their hormonal profile. So all these things will need to be taken into consideration. And sometimes it might be necessary to do an internal ultrasound scan or abdominal ultrasound scan to look for any cause that might have led to this problem. Dr. Time is catching up with us. You used a word that I want to question you on the weight. Yes. What about the, those who are average build? I'm not coming going into that. Yeah. There are some very thin people. And of course, those are obese. Is there any any sort of um, peculiarities? I'm sorry. Any peculiarities where this is concerned? So when it comes to menstrual bleeding, um, generally the average size women are the ones who are destined to uh, reproduce. That's what I understand by looking at this. So generally, if you are very thin, you don't do not produce eggs. So therefore, you don't get periods regularly. On the other hand, if you are very fat also, then your whole hormonal profile changes. That will also hinder this normal process of uh, 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 having an egg every month. So both of these conditions uh, can have um, irregular menstrual patterns or maybe these people might not have any menstruation at all. Um, so those are the uh, few things that that we wanted to talk about. This is kind of a very vast topic. And when it comes to bleeding, um, actually we couldn't touch on like what sort of things that we will do, how we will try to sort of uh, investigate on these patterns. Um, but as you have very clearly uh, pointed out, there are other things that the people would be concerned like uh, a uh, child not having proper menstruation and then somebody having uh, severe pain during a menstruation during their menstruation so these are all concerns that the people are having uh, so if you feel that any any of your bleeding pattern or any symptoms around it is abnormal so then i think it's best to seek medical advice at this point so on that note of advice we end uh, this very interesting discussion on menstrual bleeding. Thank you so much to you, Dr. Indunil Piyadigama, consultant obstetrician and gynecologist, Base Hospital, Kahabatta, for being with us on the program and sharing your expert knowledge on this very important topic. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you very much. Thank you, too, to Damianti Kolumbage for technical assistance. I'm Fatima Razik Hardison. Good night. And looking forward to your company next Monday, same time, on Views on Health.